Question 1. Who is responsible for managing health and safety on site? Give one answer. A. Building inspector. B. Contracts manager. C. Health and safety executive, HSE. D. Site manager. D. Is the correct answer. Question 2. General site rules would not normally include information about which one of the following? Give one answer. A. Names and addresses of workers. B. Near miss and accident reporting. C. Personal protective equipment, PPE. D. Site induction procedures. A. Is the correct answer. Question 3. If someone is injured on site, where should this be recorded? Give one answer. A. In an accident book or record. B. In the method of work. C. On the safe system of work plan. D. On the site plan. A. Is the correct answer. Question 4. If you have a minor accident, who should report it? Give one answer. A. Anyone who saw the accident. B. The health and safety executive, HSE. C. The subcontractor. D. U, if possible. D. Is the correct answer. Question 5. Does your employer have to provide a first aid kit? Give one answer. A. No, there is no legal duty to provide one. B. Only if more than 25 people work on site. C. Only if more than 50 people work on site. D. Yes, every site must have one. D. Is the correct answer. Question 6. What is the main risk to this worker, wearing only these items of personal protective equipment, PPE? Give one answer. A. Breathing in harmful dust. B. Damage to hearing. C. Dermatitis to skin. D. Eye injuries. D. Is the correct answer. Question 7. This label is shown on the container of a liquid that a worker is using on site. What does it mean? Give one answer. A. It can be used to feed plants and fish. B. It could cause a drought. C. It is harmful to the environment. D. It will only cause death to fish. C. Is the correct answer. Question 8. Under environmental law, which of the following statements is true? Give one answer. A. Companies and employees can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. B. Only companies can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. C. Only directors can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. D. Only employees can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. A. Is the correct answer. Question 9. What should be done if there is an oil or diesel spill on site? Give one answer. A. Call the environment agency immediately so they can arrange to have it cleaned up. B. Ignore it. Oil or diesel spills do not have serious long-term effects. C. Stop work, contain the spill, notify the supervisor and then clean up the spill. D. Use a spill kit to clean it up before the end of the day. C. Is the correct answer. Question 10. You discover a bird on a nest where you need to work. 
What should you do? Give one answer. A. Cover it with a sheet so it can be moved out of the way before starting work. B. Move it to a place of safety, carry out your work and then put it back. C. Protect it from further disturbance, make others aware and inform your supervisor. D. Scare it away by making loud noises, then carry on with your work. C. Is the correct answer. Question 11. Why is it bad practice to store heavy materials underneath a tree? Give one answer. A. Compaction of the soil could damage the tree roots. B. Materials are not protected from the tree sap. C. Mold could grow on the stored materials. D. The tree branches could get damaged. A. Is the correct answer. Question 12. You have been asked to do some work that will create dust. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Start the work. No controls are needed as dust cannot cause serious harm or injury. B. Use equipment to eliminate or reduce the dust and wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE. C. Work for short periods at a time. Regular breaks will reduce the amount of dust you breathe in. D. You should not do the work because dust is highly dangerous. B. Is the correct answer. Question 13. Where are you likely to be exposed to the highest quantities of dust when drilling, cutting, sanding or grinding? Give one answer. A. Inside a large space. B. Inside a small room. C. Outside on a still day. D. Outside on a windy day. B. Is the correct answer. Question 14. Who can enter a confined space? Give one answer. A. Anyone who has completed an apprenticeship. B. Anyone who is trained, competent and authorized. C. Only competent machine drivers who have the correct license. D. Only site managers and supervisors of the company. B. Is the correct answer. Question 15. What can cause occupational asthma? Give one answer. A. Breathing in hazardous dust, fumes, or vapors. B. Exposure to loud noise on a regular basis. C. Exposure to rat urine whilst working. D. Skin contact with any hazardous substance. A. Is the correct answer. Question 16. The seal of your respiratory protective equipment, RPE, can be broken by which two things? Give two answers. A. A hearing aid. B. Earrings. C. Facial hair. D. Facial scarring. E. Makeup. C. And D. Is the correct answer. Question 17. If your respiratory protective equipment, RPE, is a bad fit, which one of the following is most likely to happen? Give one answer. A. It will break easily. B. It will filter more air. C. It will get damaged. D. It will not protect you. D. Is the correct answer. Question 18. How often is it good practice to carry out repeat face fit tests for respiratory protective equipment, RPE? Give one answer. A. On a regular basis. B. On an ad hoc basis. C. When starting a new shift pattern. D. 
when starting work on a different site? A. Is the correct answer. Question 19. What should you do if you run out of the water you are using to control dust? Give one answer. A. Ask everyone to clear the area and then carry on. B. Carry on but get someone to sweep up afterwards. C. Put on additional respiratory protection. D. Stop and refill the water. D. Is the correct answer. Question 20. Your doctor tells you that you have hand arm vibration syndrome, HAVS, possibly caused through work. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Inform your supervisor or employer. B. Only inform your friends at work. C. Tell no one, as HAVS is not reportable. D. Tell no one, as it's not contagious. A. Is the correct answer. Question 21. What should you do if you need to wear ear defenders but an ear pad is missing from one of the shells? Give one answer. A. Do not work in noisy areas until they are replaced. B. Leave them off and work without any hearing protection. C. Put them on and work with them as they are. D. Take an ear pad from another set of ear defenders. A. Is the correct answer. Question 22. What are two ways of reducing the risk of transferring hazardous substances from your hands to your mouth? Give two answers. A. Putting barrier cream on your hands before eating. B. Using barrier cream for working activities. C. Washing protective gloves before each use. D. Washing your hands before eating. E. Wearing protective gloves while you are working. D. And E is the correct answer. Question 23. When referring to protection, what is a high UV rate cream designed to protect you from? Give one answer. A. Abrasions. B. Dermatitis. C. Legionella. D. Sunburn. D. Is the correct answer. Question 24. What is the most likely source of hepatitis in this image? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. A. Is the correct answer. Question 25. What other illness can be easily confused with the early signs of Wiles disease, leptospirosis? Give one answer. A. Dermatitis. B. Diabetes. C. Hay fever. D. Influenza, flu. D. Is the correct answer. Question 26. Who has a duty to protect an individual from stress at work? Give one answer. A. The employer. B. The government. C. The local authority. D. The union. A. Is the correct answer. Question 27. Which one of the following statements is true? Give one answer. A. Learning difficulties and mental health problems are the same. B. Mental health problems are common and can happen to anyone. C. Mental health problems are rare among construction workers. D. People experiencing mental health problems tend to be violent or dangerous. B. Is the correct answer. Question 28. When absorption granules from a spill kit have been used on oil, 
What action should be taken? Give one answer. A. Clear them up and place them in a sealed waste bag ready for specialist disposal. B. Clear them up straight away and put them into a general waste skip. C. Leave them on the oil for a few days before clearing into the general waste. D. Use water to help clean up excess oil before specialist disposal. A. Is the correct answer. Question 29. When should an oil spill be cleaned up? Give one answer. A. At the end of the shift. B. Immediately, it could cause someone to slip. C. Never, it will be absorbed into the ground. D. When it has dried. B. Is the correct answer. Question 30. The ground has become muddy on site. What could be done to prevent the ground becoming slippery? Give one answer. A. Improve lighting. B. Improve signage. C. Treat the surface with gravel. D. Treat the surface with salt. C. Is the correct answer.